everybody. This is Randy Younger. Welcome back to Producer's Corner. Today I'm going to talk about this really kind of elusive little trick that I learned years and years ago about mid-side processing. Now this is kind of like uh, some black art kind of stuff. It's a little bit uh, confusing maybe to some of you and a lot of you just like, I don't even want to know what this is, but I'm going to try to simplify this for you a little bit. I used to notice years ago that my mixes tended to come at me sort of as this wall of sound. And I like a lot of thick stacks, a lot of lo I like a lot of instrumentation. And even though they were panned, I just didn't get that stereo image that I wanted. And it was coming at me kind of muddy a little bit. And, you know, maybe the mastering guy could, you know, fix it a little bit. Um, in fact, they would do that. And there was things that they did to sweeten the thing that were things that I could have done before I even handed it over to mastering. And these are things that you can do too. And especially if you begin using services like Lander, you're going to want to do these things to really sweeten your mix as much as possible. So let's talk about this a little bit. So this mid-side mysterious thing is really not all that mysterious. Let's look at what's going on. When we have instruments like bass and a kick drum and everything that most of the energy is in the low frequency range, that tends to be what's called non-correlated uh, spectral energy. And that means that it really doesn't come at you from over there or over there. It sort of comes at you from everywhere. And it tends to be more mono instead of stereo. You can pan bass left and right and really all it does is cut the volume down, but if you're listening in the center position or the mix position, it still feels like it's coming out of both speakers because it's it's uh, non-correlated directionally, directional information. Now, if we look at, I mean, sorry, it's highly correlated, which means that normally there's as much bass in the left as, or in the left or whatever, left as there is in the right, and that tends to make it mono. When you have things like triangles and cymbals and tambourines, those you can pan hard left and right, and they or high guitars, pianos, especially on the high notes, those tend to be very stereographic. And when you pan them left or right, you can really tell, oh, that's way over there or that's way over there. Okay, but that's not all of what I'm talking about. What I am talking about, though, is when we talk about the low-frequency instruments, they tend to, because they're non-correlated, I'm excuse me, because they are highly correlated, which means there's the same amount of energy in the left and the right, um, what will happen is it sneaks into the left and the right sides of your stereo image, and that's not a good thing. It actually creates mud, and it makes it difficult for you to de uh, detect some of the higher frequency things, which give you that spatial, that stereographic image. So it's not necessary information. You're still going to have that bass coming at you from the middle, but it doesn't need to come at you from the left or the right. It just needs to come at you from the middle. So we can go ahead and sacrifice it on the hard left and the hard right and leave that room for the upper mid all the way to the high frequency uh, signals. Okay, so let's come in here. I'm going to play a little bit of a song for you, and then I'm going to show you mid-side processing. Okay, so let's start from like the chorus here. Feel me. And that sounds fine. It's a little bit boxy, a little bit muddy, and it's like it used to be on my mixes where that all would just kind of come at me and I was a little more difficult to dete detect instruments. There's just a mush in there, a, a, a muddiness, a lack of clarity. Okay. And as I began to start working in Nashville, those guys are all about clarity and crystallizing and detailing every little thing. And you know that's there, that's there, and their stereo images are just amazingly uh, detailed, okay? So here's what we're going to do. Let's go over here to the equalizer for a minute, and uh, let's unbypass it. And what we're going to do is just solo the side 
on this mid-side equalizer. Okay, so I'm using isotope by ozone. I'm sorry, ozone by isotope, uh, ozone 7, which a lot of you may have. Uh, FabFilter has a mid-side EQ. Um, I'm sure a lot of other tools that are out there that have mid-side EQ. In other words, you can EQ that center area separately from the far side area, okay? Or, or more specifically, EQ the correlated information from the non-correlated information, okay? The hard left and hard right information, okay? So let's look at the EQ for a second. And I'm going to uh, solo just the side band here. This is the information that's in the far left and the far right. And I'm going to turn off my filter there. And let's listen to this. Okay, I want you to notice there's this whoopiness, the low frequency information, it's pushing in, in the sides and that's totally unnecessary. Listen to that whoopiness. Totally unnecessary. Let's go ahead and cut that out. Just that alone, just that one thing clarified my sides. I don't have that information muddying up my far sides information. So that's a really good thing. I'm cutting from about, I'm using a uh, high pass filter and normally an isotope, it, it comes up beginning at 200 hertz. I tend to go up around 300 hertz a little bit. And the other thing I like to do is since the high, pa uh, excuse me, the non-correlated or the highly stereo uh, information tends to be in the higher frequencies, I like to push up, push up a couple dB from about two kilohertz on just to give it a little bit more clarity on the sides. You can it's just giving a, a little bit more airiness in the sides, okay? So now let's listen to uh, when I solo versus unsolo. Okay, what I'm going to do actually, what I meant to do is I'm going to... Uh, play this clip and bypass and enable this EQ. Okay, so just that, push a little, it only in the side. You don't need to deal with the mid as far as EQ is, unless you need to, but for the most part, you really don't need to. Um, what we're going to do in the mid is we're going to do a little bit of light compression, but only in the mid, okay? And what that's going to do is allow us to punch our transients, you know, uh, with a little more articulation, uh, create a little more detail in the mid by by just adding some light compression on in all of the bands. Okay, so let's uh, first of all let's listen to it without the compression. So one of the things that you'll notice is that the vocal without getting louder is getting more intelligible. It's actually sitting in its own little space there and it's protected from some of these other transients in these other frequencies. And it helps lift the vocal out of the mix without making it loud, louder than it needs to be. So now what I'm gonna do is A, B without the mid-side EQ and without our, so let's, without the side EQ roll-off and without the mid 
compression. I'll A-B both these. So this is without. So a couple things happen when I bring in, especially uh, when I bring in the dynamics. One of the things that it did do, and it's probably because of my, I use makeup game. I put in a little bit of light compression on each of the bands, but I also bring in a little bit of makeup gain. Probably brought in a little bit too much in this two to 10K band. And that made her vocal just a tad bit bitey. And uh, I don't want to have to go in and do surgical EQ to get rid of that bitiness. I'm um, just going to bring that down a little bit. Let's see if this is better. So what I want to say is, let me just boil it back down again. On the EQ, we're only going to deal with the side channel, okay? And we're going to do a little bit of a roll off from about 300 hertz. Uh, I don't know what the dB on that roll off is. So 12 dB per octave uh, roll off. And then just a slight push from about 2K up, maybe a 2 dB push. And this is in, in the side channel on the EQ. Leave the mid alone. And then on the uh, compression, I bring in a multiband compressor. And I do, I adjust the compression to taste in each of the bands. Uh, because what I'm listening to, this is all mono. If I solo, uh, excuse me, solo this. So this is in the mid, okay? So adjust the mid compression to really manage your transients in each of the bands, and then A, B them and say, did I make it better or did I make it worse? But the equalizer trick is really easy. The uh, mid dynamics is a little bit more complicated, but I can guarantee you, if you'll do this sparingly, even just a little bit, it will improve your mixes, okay? Hey guys, if you like this, if this helped at all, or if you think I'm crazy, um, either way, please comment and then like, share, and subscribe. And uh, let's keep the dialogue going, keep the comments coming. And uh, if you haven't already, please follow me on Instagram, Randy Younger Music. And uh, I really appreciate you guys participating with all this. It's been a lot of fun doing it, and I, I hope to keep on doing it. So until next time, thank you.